Hey, today I'm going to do a quick overview of how to use Visual Force controllers in Cloud Craze. So I edited the product detail page. We have a script template right here and we need to use this to get it on the page. And we have our controller right up here. I, I was going to do this like coding but the it took me like an hour to get get this code on the website with Salesforce and I was getting internet connection there so I thought it'd just be easier to review code as it is now so anyways we have this function called validate cart and what I'm trying to do I'll go on the page is I want to validate the, I want to val validate the process before they hit this, when they hit this add to cart button and see if I want to add it, add it to cart or not. So if they go over 50, I don't want to add it to the cart. So that's our use case. So I'm going to make this function called validate cart. It's taking an event and a product ID now this e that target dot data set dot whatever this is like an object has a skew and some other ID that which I don't know what what it leads to but um, I found it isn't too useful but it is one way to get the product by skew number so if you want to do it that way you can or you could just pass in the product ID I got quantity using general document element by ID and if we see what is calling that validate cart we passed in the event and then this dot product dot prod bean dot ID using handlebars now we're going to go back to the JavaScript so we have this remote call and you usually see this in Visual Force, and then you, you do all, you know your code. Don't do that. That is not the cloud race, cloud craze way to do that. This is the cloud craze way. So instead of using that remote action you see in regular Salesforce Visual Force pages, you want to do it the cloud craze way, which is something called the remote call. So you have your class name, a product detail controller. And then we have the function that we want to get to. Then we're passing quantity, product ID, returning a res object, and then having an error. So success, reload the page, else display an error message. This NMSB thing, um, I've always used it, but didn't think much about it. So it says if the remote action is defined on the subscriber class, then NMSB can't be defined as false. So just, I thought of this like as subscriber pages. They don't belong to Cloud Crazy. You make them yourself. I'm thinking, oh, this is something that we're making ourselves. So we use NMSB equals false. So that's what I thought about of that. So whenever you have a custom class, just use that. All right, back here. So we call it using it the cloud craze way. I want to take a note here that we're passing in quantity and product ID. But when we go over here, we get this remote action contact CTX. Um, this is one of the experience things you need to know. You don't have to pass anything in and it automatically go in. I've never seen anything like it before, but that's what cloud craze does. So we're going to go with it. So have this CTX here first for everything, and then you have your quantity and product ID. And a good practice in Cloud Crate is to use this CC remote action result. So this is an object that you would turn after your function's over. So it has like dot message dot data dot success to it. And we need to init remote context here or the CTX won't work so 
this object would have the current card ID, the current user. Probably has more, but I haven't used it for anything other than those two. And then we return this CC remote action result. So the first thing I check if the card is mixed. So if it's a quote item or if it's not, then I don't want the card to be mixed. And then I have an easier example <laughs> to understand is if quantity is greater than or equal to 50. Quantity cannot be over 49, but if it's less than or e less than 40, oh god, less than 49, then yes, 49 or less than, then do add to cart and then resident success equals true. And down to here to add a cart, also pass the CTX quantity and product ID. And then we do the API for CC API cart add to. So we pass in the current version, the current cart ID, um, the new lines, which is just a product ID and a quantity. Oh, and there's something I want to point out. 75% of the way by project we were having trouble with errors if people checked out they wouldn't get a new cart so then I had to check if they had a cart and then create a new cart the create new cart cart oh, create new cart isn't too bad uh, it's easy to do just do the API's and you'll be fine hmm, is there anything else that I want to say about this I'll have these two classes on my website, so what I would do is I would look at my code or take it and reverse engineer it for your project or just take pieces of it and then you'll get where you're going. Okay, bye. No, I'm not done. I forgot to show the error. So when I hit 50, I get an error. And when I have four, that'll add it to the cart for me.